Hello and welcome to another speedy processing tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at the, some data I've taken of M81 and M82. This was taken from uh, Portal 8 City Centre using a one-shot colour camera and a new one for me using an Optolong L Quad Enhance broadband light pollution filter which I've been quite impressed by. Right, let's crack on then. I'm going to start with an integer resample to bin by two. So down sample two. Okay, this will make it uh, give us a better working resolution, and we'll make the processing a bit speedier as well because it's easier on the computer. Uh, now I'm going to save this and then load it up in Graxpert. Go. I'm just going to keep these settings as the defaults just so it's speedy. Let's create our grid and then calculate our background. And then let's see if this has taken away our gradient. So here's our original the background. Oh yes, yeah, some pretty extreme gradients and the process version. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. And then go ahead and load it up in Picton site. Okay, looking good. I like to make clones as we go along, so we'll do that here. And we're going to fix the colors next. So to do that, first of all, we're going to go to uh, Image Solver. And this is uh, like a useful step to, uh, before performing SPCC color calibration. Now, SPCC, broadband data. So this is all looking good. Uh, okay, we want to choose a region of interest from our background to help with the neutralization. So let's just choose something that looks empty. That'll do. And then we select it here. And run that. And we get a nice graph up. Very good. And our colors should be a bit more accurate now. Let's just rename this, because that name's getting a bit long, isn't it? We just ran SPCC, so we'll call that uh, Optolong LQEF, the L quad enhance filter. That's what LQEF is, and then SBCC. We'll be running blur exterminator soon, but just before we do that, let's get our PSF function so that we know what number to input. PSF is the point spread function. Now we're done, and what we want to look at is uh, are these two numbers here and we want to take something that's in between the two so let's just say 1.36 that's close enough so we need to remember that 1.36 we're going to click OK here and then we go to Blur Exterminator we're not using automatic we are putting in 1.36 and then we can change any of these that we want to but the defaults are normally pretty good I think this will be fine uh, let's run that a minute later and that's done. Let's rename this Blue X and again work off our clone. So if we make any mistakes then it's easy to just go back to wherever we want to in the workflow. Now I used to perform noise reduction at this stage but I was given some advice that I might get a better result if I save the noise reduction to quite late in the workflow so that's what I'm going to try this time. So now it is time to stretch our data if I was spending lots of time on this, I'd use a GHS, which is really good, but this is a speedy tutorial. So I'm going to use easy soft stretch. Everything set to the defaults. Click, and here we go. We have our stretched image. Let's call this easy. And soon we're going to be removing the stars so that we have a starless image to work on because we don't want to be performing all of our processing steps 
messing up our stars uh, that we actually just want to be doing on the galaxy. So what we need to do is run Starnet uh, to remove these stars. Okie dokie. Uh, and I really like a utility called Screen Stars, which is very effective. So I'm going to go to find it, if I can remember. Uh, script Utilities Screen Stars. We're doing star removal. Our star review is this one. Our star list view is this one. Uh, let's run that. Boom. So now we have a good quality star field. Better quality than the one that would have been generated using Starnet. I'm going to put this out of the way. Minimize that. Let's call this Starless and make a clone. Next, it's time to do a little bit of curves transformation. Let's click on the circle here to give a real time preview. And we just want to darken that background a bit, get a bit more detail in the galaxies themselves, make it a bit more contrasty. We just play about with this basically. If we want to zoom in, we can click this button here and that gives us a zoomed view and we can also click on this circle here for before and after so if we're happy with that, looks pretty good we're going to click the uh, square and then this will look terrible but that's just a preview and it's, it's what it would happen if you were to apply that again okay that was just very quick but you get the idea uh, next, what I want to do is boost the red that's in these two galaxies. The L uh, quad enhance filter lets through a little bit more hydrogen, I think. It, it, it's good in that way, but I want to boost the red even more. So what I'm going to do is find the game script, and this will allow us to create a mask over our two galaxies so that when we boost the red, we're boosting the red that we want in the galaxies and we're not boosting red that we don't want in the background. Let's add. And this is all fairly intuitive, I think, the interface. We just want to create these shapes that go over our galaxies. Okay, so that is a good one. And then over here. That will do. Uh, okay, so we've got our two there. Let's click OK. And we have our mask. I'm going to drag that over here. And that shows that the mask has been applied. Let's just put that up there. A bit hard to see with all the red though, so we'll click up there. And the mask has been applied, we know because that button is checked. And what we're going to do is go, well, we specifically want the red, don't we? So let's put a red mask over here and blur that. I think I should have done this before the other mask. Let's take that mask off. Put the red one on there. And then let's boost, boost the red a bit. Yeah, can you see that? It is boosting the red a little bit. Let's run that. 
and then let's see how this other galaxy is looking. Yeah, it's boosted even more. Maybe we want a bit more color, just general color in all those galaxies. So we don't need our red mask. But let's get this one back up. Whoops. And just boost our colors here. Okie dokie. I like to run local histogram equalizer next, which will look terrible to start with because the default values are way too high. But then if I move this down, and I normally put it down to about 0 0.2 or so, so quite low. And this should add a bit of definition to the galaxies. But let's test this. I'm going to zoom in and we'll do our before and after preview. Before, after, before, after. It, uh, it's a bit subtle, but it does look better with the after. So let's run that. And we've still got our mask on. So this is only applying to the galaxies, not the background. And now a spot of unsharp mask, which will sharpen up our view. I like this. It's easy to overdo it, and I am sometimes guilty of overdoing it, but it can look really good. Right, so this is the slide that we're going to change. 0 0.8, probably a bit much. 0 0.6 looks pretty good. Yep, let's go with that. So far, so good. Now, is there anything else we want to do here? This is looking pretty good. We could play about with the curves, just see if we can make an improvement, but it, it might it might be pretty good as it is. Remember this mask is on, so we're only affecting the, uh, the galaxies here. I think that looks better. Subtle, but it's okay. Tiny increments. Background's probably a bit bright though, so let's invert that mask uh, with this button up here and now we should only be affecting the background not the actual galaxies so let's uh, go ahead and darken the background yep that ought to do it Okay, we can always fine tune this later if we need to. I'm just trying to be speedy. Now I'm going to remove this mask and it's time to run our noise reduction, noise exterminator. It's good to experiment with different uh, settings for the sliders here. I was playing about with this before, so I know that 0.15 and 0.6 looks pretty good. I'll tell you what, actually, let's make a clone before we do anything. Let's call this one needs noise X. This one will be one that has noise X. Let's run that. That's done. And just out of interest, we could compare the views. To do that, we need to make the windows the same size. This is our before and after noise reduction. Let's zoom in here to the before. And if we drag and drop the name of it over onto this name, then the two views will match. We drag and drop the two windows so they're over each other. And if we do control and page down, 
every time we press that it flicks between the last two windows that are active. Yeah, it's a, that's definitely an improvement for the Noise X. Maybe it could have done with a bit more noise reduction. Actually, put a bit more on. Let's run it again, just a smidge more. That's completed and what I can do is the uh, undo and the redo buttons to go before and after. Yeah, I think it's a little bit better with that extra noise reduction. Okay. Let's, oops. Let's make a clone of that. We've done with our noise reduction. And I think it's about time we brought our stars back in. So we need to go to script utilities and screen stars. We're going to be doing star replacement. Our starless view is the one we've just been working on there. That's LQEF noise X clone. And the stars is the one that we made earlier, which is just called stars. We haven't done anything to that. Sometimes I like to play about with the star field, but let's just keep it simple for now. Whack those stars right back in. good. I'm going to call this combined. And I'm just going to run a little bit of dark structure enhance, which I use in almost all of my images. If I can find it, there it is. Just a little bit. And this works particularly well for uh, the, the spiral arms in galaxies, I find. There we go, that's just worked a little bit. It's subtle, but that's okay, we don't want to overcook it. Now at this stage, you could go back and play about with any of those settings again, maybe curves a bit more, whatever you want. But uh, it's getting a bit long, we're almost at 18 minutes. So I will finish by finding combined on here and let's upsample by two so we can get our resolution back. and then I would save that and I might put it into Lightroom for a couple of final tweaks, but uh, it's pretty much done. Oh, I might do a slight crop as well. Just a taste. And there we go.